the main opportunities arising from the globalization of health insurance uh, uh, rise from the concept that, that uh, uh, the need for health insurance uh, effectively knows no boundaries. Traditionally, uh, personal lines uh, have always been characterized uh, by being not restricted to any geographical border. If you have a life insurance and you die anywhere in the world, you are insured and your estate will receive the payment. However, health insurance also traditionally has been restricted to your country of residence or country of domicile. However, with the increasing regionalization and globalization of the centers of health excellence for health insurance, with increasing mobility that comes from your workplace, your lifestyle and your status, there is a growing demand for health insurance that has no geographical restrictions. This makes, in turn, the definition of expatriates as the primary recipients for global health insurance become obsolete. We have a new class of people who are global in their nature, global in their lifestyle, and most importantly, global in their insurance needs. They may be expatriates, they may be the so-called third country nationals, they may be global travelers, but more and more, they tend to be local nationals uh, who perhaps were born and live in their country of origin but who don't want to be restricted to their country when they seek the best treatment for their health worldwide. It's fair to say that so far regulators as a whole have been quite reactive to this trend. Uh, clearly, uh, um, needs uh, and trends are evolving and uh, the, the whole uh, geography landscape is evolving, but for the time being, regulators have been more preoccupied mainly with the compliance and financial aspects of ensuring that health insurance is provided in a country in accordance to uh, the rule of law and to fiscal laws and to labor laws. This said, however, we see an increasing trend towards portability in certain pockets of the world which tend to have a high frequency of globally mobile people. I'm thinking about, for instance, the Middle East, whereby uh, there is a growing trend towards uh, making health insurance mandatory not only for locals but also for uh, expatriates and global travelers who are assigned to those locations and that in turn ensures an easier portability of these plans. Likewise, in Asia, instead of we see perhaps slightly different trends, i.e. regulators being more flexible and business oriented with regards to the ecosystem that health insurance providers offer there as opposed to the ultimate recipients. I'm thinking about the case of Singapore which may not be particularly flexible for the recipients and the users of health insurance but it's certainly very business conducive with regards to the operators and the healthcare providers themselves to help them set up shop in the country and operate efficiently without unnecessary barriers. Well, it's fair to say that uh, the number of uh, traditional expatriates uh, going on a fairly short to medium term assignment around the world is shrinking. There is a trend to localization, but with this trend, there is a growing demand uh, driven by employers to provide international health insurance as a lever to attract and retain talent irrespective of nationality and geographic status. Uh, what once used to be a typical lever for retention i.e. a rich pension plan, is no longer economically feasible. As a result, there are more and more HR managers that attract young talents and retain them by offering them an international private medical plan. Mm -hmm. Because again, they recognize that there is a growing demand for this and that typically these plans tend to be more costly than a traditional purely local medical plan. So the tangible benefits and added value of an international medical plan are now being leveraged by human resources professionals to attract and retain the best talents in the industry.
In my view, ecosystems uh, are by definition an open system in which uh, uh, insurers are one of the spokes in an ideal hub and spoke model. Uh, ecosystems uh, are open-ended, they join together uh, fintech company, health tech companies, uh, uh, providers of innovative solutions, and so I see this model developing in a sustainable way by effectively assigning to insurers uh, their core capacity as one of course a payer, but most importantly as a coordinator, as a partner in the health and well-being of their insured members by connecting with all these ecosystems, with all these players. So we see more and more insurance products, they have an element of traditional insurance, which is the core business of the insurer, but an additional growing open-ended element of services provided by uh, third parties that specialize in their respective field. I'm talking about telemedicine, uh, genetic testing, second medical opinion, medical concierge, all those added value services typically an insurer will not develop on their own, but they will source from third party providers which again are part of this growing ecosystem. This ecosystem also in my opinion requires a mechanism that makes the growth of the system uh, sustainable and most importantly secure. And uh, this glue, if you wish, that keeps the ecosystem together is, in my opinion, represented by the use of blockchain technology. Blockchain technology is not meant just to underpin financial transactions uh, through a distributed ledger, but more and more in health insurance, it's meant to underpin also the transmission of health records and the transmission of medical evidence across all these ecosystem of partners. So I see that as the ideal glue that keeps the ecosystem linked in a secure way for the benefit of our customers. Thank you very much for this interview. Thank you.